Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So this is a follow-up to my series of videos about Umar Johnson. This is a brief update about the situation. So I'm gonna share my screen. If you all could bear with me a second. And I'm gonna show you this article. This article is in the um, description box so that when you get a chance, you can read it for yourself. But as you all know, Umar Johnson received an order to show cause. And the order of, to show cause basically says that he does not have a license to practice psychology in the state of Pennsylvania. It also alleges that he has held himself out to be a psychologist despite not having a license. He faces fines for doing so. Um, he has a hearing that was originally scheduled for January the 8th, which is, I think that's Monday, but he has recently retained counsel and that hearing has been postponed. And this is the article right here detailing this information. Um, it points out the number of followers that he has. Um, it points out that his primary Facebook and GoFundMe accounts have been suspended. And here's the allegations again, you know, as stated in this article, the State Bureau of Professional and Occupational Affairs has charged Johnson, known as Dr. Umar, with portraying himself on his website as a psychologist who practices counseling services without having a state license to do either. And it says that if proved, the board could levy fines in order Johnson to pay the cost of the investigation. Um, you know, this article points out how he's raised all this money for setting up the school. Um, but yet there's an issue of transparency. As you all know, I've discussed this in many videos here on YouTube about, you know, whether or not he's being transparent enough. You know, this guy claimed that GoFundMe took like $150,000 from the $400,000 that he has raised. Um, and there, I've heard different numbers for how much he's raised. I've heard that he's raised $700,000. I've heard that he's raised $400,000. Uh, but $150,000 being taken from his account doesn't sound right because GoFundMe only takes 5%. And there's no way that 5% would equal $150,000. $50,000. So that raises questions. And then also there are questions about, you know, the GoFundMe being shut down as I've raised in prior videos, you know, that raises questions about like transparency and about the use of these funds, whether or not he is in fact using these funds properly. Um, one thing that was very interesting about this article, but before I go into that point, you know, I will say this, like I've no, I've watched a couple of videos, um, about this situation involving Umar Johnson. And in particular, I saw one with young Pharaoh, um, you know, talking about this issue. Um, if you haven't seen this video, you know, you could check it out. I'll try to post a link in the, in the description box when I get a chance. But I think that with young Pharaoh, he was confusing issues. You know, he was confusing the issue of Umar Johnson having his doctorate and him having his license, you know, those are two separate issues. You know, whether or not he has a doctorate is one issue. And the other issue is whether or not he has a license. Those are two completely different things. But in um, Pharaoh's video, he just kept conflating the two issues um, without clarifying and, you know, assuming that Umar doesn't have his doctorate when really that's not even the issue in this, um, in the case, you know, it's not about whether or not he has his doctorate. That's not something that they challenge. They challenge whether or not he has this license. A license is separate and apart from the doctorate. And this article right here even points out how to root, verify that Umar does have a doctorate in clinical psychology from the Philadelphia College um, but that's, that still doesn't 
deal with the core issue with whether or not he has an actual license. As I pointed out on somebody else's live stream, it's like you can compare it to a lawyer. You know, all lawyers go to law school, but before you can actually practice law, you need more than just a JD or a Juris Doctor degree. You need to pass the bar in order to get a license to practice law in that particular jurisdiction. So here, you know, the issue is whether or not this man has a license. And, you know, so that hearing has been postponed because uh, Umar Johnson has retained counsel. And for this interview, he did not answer any of the reporters' questions. They asked him questions about this issue. He didn't answer any of the questions. And um, one thing that I found real interesting about this article, and this is the reason why I titled it Malefi Asante versus Umar Johnson or vice versa, is uh, because you know they asked Malefi Asante about this issue. And this is what he had to say. You know, he was asked about, you know, Umar Johnson and all that kind of stuff. And Malefi Asante said that he disagrees that Johnson and like-minded thinkers are Afrocentric. And this is what he said. He said, it's an academic theory. It is a philosophy. It is founded on facts and information, Asante said. And then he went on to describe Umar Johnson this way. He said that he hit a market of people who were hungry for information, who do not necessarily know how to discern what is based on evidence and what is not. So basically, he's saying that, you know, some of this information that Umar Johnson puts out here is not based on evidence, it's not based on facts and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, really, this is like a, a real jab at Umar Johnson because, you know, Malefi Asante is known for Afrocentricity. Like he's he's the author of the book. He's like one of the foremost scholars in this area of African history and all that kind of stuff. And for him to come out and basically say that some of the stuff that Umar Johnson puts out there is not based on evidence, and that is you know his audience are people that are hungry for information and they don't know what's right and wrong or what's actual facts and all that kind of stuff. That's a major slam, man. That's a slam coming from a scholar. You know, and I would be interested to hear what Umar Johnson's response is. And I want to, I would be interested in interviewing Malefi Asante to get more information, to find out if he, in fact, made the statement to begin with, and also to find out, like, how familiar he is with Umar Johnson and what particular things he disagrees with. That's what I would want to know. But aside from the ideological issue and the question of, uh, facts and evidence and all that kind of stuff. I would want to know what does he have to say about this issue of public trust? What does he have to say about these allegations against Umar Johnson and about um, these funds, you know, the whole issue of the funds? So I'm going to go to your comments before I close out. If you can bear with me a second. Let me, do I have a link up? Uh, yeah, let me pull up the live chat so I can see what you all are saying if you're tuning in. Just bear with me a second. So we're just about finished. Just bear with me one minute. You know, we went through, I never did this many hangouts in one night. <laughs> but a lot of y'all have been rolling with me. I appreciate it. I just didn't want to do them all together as one. I like to have some structure and order. Shout out to Andre Toppin. Shout out to... Teresa F for coming back. Thanks for y'all. Thank you to y'all for coming back.
Now, enter the arena uncut said he never took the money out. I mean, how do you know that? I mean, just as Umar Johnson posted like this notice of hearing, he could post his bank statements and just shut it all down. I mean, I was watching a video that Haven Bullets posted, a video of Sonetta talking about the funds that he's raising on GoFundMe. Sonetta said how much he wanted to, wanted to raise. He stated what his goal was. He stated how much he had actually raised, and then he proceeded to show his bank statement. So we could see exactly how much GoFundMe took and how much he still has in his account. Why can't Umar Johnson do the same? What's so hard about that? That's something easy. That, that would shut up the critics. I mean, the man posted up his information on Instagram, you know, the notice of hearing, but he didn't even post the actual order to show cause so that the people could know what the matter was all about. So again, that goes to this issue of transparency. And Stone Gatherer said, yeah, um, young Pharaoh has, has it wrong or whatever, or was wrong. Yeah, I mean, he was wrong to the extent that he kept confusing, you know, the license versus the degree issue. But I think that he raised some great points in his video nonetheless. Yeah, and then Umar, like he just allowed GoFundMe to shut down his account. And his excuses for doing so were lame. I mean, he said, well, YouTube, I mean, um, well, GoFundMe has been asking for the same information. And I'm tired of giving them the same information over and over again. And uh, they're taking 150000 from the account. And I just explained why that's not true. It's only 5%. And if you do the math, let's do the math on this, like 5%. Hold on one second, y'all. Let me just do the math on this 5% of 40,000. I mean, of 400,000. Let's do that. 400,000 times four times, um, hold on one second. 400,000 times 0 0.04 equals $16,000. So that's the most that GoFundMe would have taken from that account, $16,000. not a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the fact that he would make that misrepresentation just causes you to question everything man i mean this guy has made misrepresentations so many times about a lot of different things shout out to make good evening to you I see that Andre Toppin Jr. said that he lost my trust a long time ago. And then he needs to relax and settle down. Shout out to uh, Lord Praiser. Thanks for hanging in there. I know I've been keeping y'all up tonight, but I'm about to close this out soon. Um, I just didn't want to do some long Google Hangout talking about a whole bunch of disconnected subjects, so I had to break it up like this. And I want to thank y'all for hanging in there with me. Miss Red said I did believe that he was a doctor, and he probably is, because like the root verified that he received his doctorate. That's not the issue. The issue is whether or not he has an actual license. Like he received his doctorate according to the root. They verified that. Now the question is whether or not he followed through and got his license. And his response, his written response to that order to show cause, he acknowledges that he didn't have a license. 
but he claims that he never held himself out to be a, a licensed psychologist. But when you look at his website, when you look at statements that he's made, it's clear that he's held himself out to be a psychologist. And that's problematic. And I wouldn't be surprised if he pays a fine, if he ends up having to pay fines and all that kind of stuff. And some people have speculated about this just being the tip of the iceberg, the beginning of, you know, a whole chain of events. And again, you know, I don't wish harm on anyone. And, you know, I'm holding my judgment until like there's a ruling on that particular issue of him having a license. Again, um, Elaine Lloyd said he called a bunch of people stupid. Yeah, I mean, he, reg he regularly insults people, man. He insults like his supporters, you know, calling black people trifling. He said, I only raised 250 million in six, I mean, not 250 million, 250,000 in six months. You know, then he went on to say trifling as black people or something like that. This is how he talks to the people that gave him money. This is how he talks to the people that invited him to, to speak to them. But black, I mean, so unfortunately, black people accept this as leadership, man. And Stone Gather said when Umar stated that they took over a hundred thousand, that was a red flag. Exactly. And Miss Red said, when they start using mental abuse tactics on us, I'd be done. You know, belittling and bigging up in other groups. Yeah, that's what a lot of these people do. They they walk all over black people. They trash black people, talk about how they didn't give them enough money, talking about how they, they're trifling, how they went to the white man to complain and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then they constantly say, well, white people don't do X, Y, and Z, but black people do X, Y, and Z, and this and that. And they're, they're belittling um, black people, despite all this black pride rhetoric and all this and that. And I think that they should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, I see. Oh, I see what Elaine Lloyd is saying. She said the root verified that someone named Umar got a degree in 2012. So he was lying about the degree. I, I need to learn more information about that. And somebody said, well, what was the deal with Malefi Asante? And basically Malefi Asante said a lot of people are just hungry for information and they don't know. Um, about the evidence and the facts and all that kind of stuff. So that's why, you know, basically he was saying that's why they gravitate towards people like a Umar Johnson. Basically, um, you know, questioning Umar Johnson's uh, accuracy of information that he provides and stuff. Oh, it says that, uh, Elaine says that Umar has been saying that he had a degree before 2012. Wow, I, I need to look into that. And then uh, Andre Toppin Jr. said, um, that's when you know he's lying. Yeah, I got to work too, praise the, I'm about to end this hangout right now. You've been hanging tough with me, I appreciate that. So I'll respond to this last comment, then I'm out. And I want to thank y'all for tuning in and rolling with your man. Um, it says the sad thing is new, um, Umar is bad, but there are others in the community who take more money than him and lie, but don't get caught out enough. Yeah, true. I mean, there are other people that are taking money. I mean, you, all you have to do is look at some of these pastors, you know, who are just, you know, taking tons of money from the community and not offering anything in return. <laughs> that guy, Ancient Melanin, said, I'm a descendant of 
Rick Ross. <laughs> I think you're joking around like that guy, um, <laughs> like Tariq, when he was joking around about uh, Umar, you know, talking about, I'm a descendant of <laughs> Frederick Douglass. I'm a descendant. He went on to say, I'm a descendant of Florida Evans. <laughs> I'm a descendant of all these people. It was hilarious, man. <laughs> had me dying laughing, man. That guy is hilarious. I don't agree with some of the things that he says, but he's a funny dude, man. And um, Park says, anyone who saw the original video for the school should have used their common sense. He was never going to get that school. Thanks for hanging out with us, um, Miss Red. Uh, appreciate it. <laughs> Elaine Lloyd said Umar should have just started a church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> he he basically is a, a, I mean, he, yeah, he's basically just like another one of these pastors, man. So anyway, man, I don't want to keep you all night, man, even though it's almost midnight. But I want to thank you all for hanging in there with me, you know, for rocking with me this whole time for people that went through all three of the hangouts tonight. I appreciate y'all. I support y'all. I love y'all. So good night, peace and blessings to each and every one of you.